Hey girl, hey, and welcome back to my channel. If you're new here, thank you so much for joining us today. A very big thank you if you've already been here. We are proudly at 205 subscribers, so if you're just popping in for the first time, make sure you hit the subscribe button because we'd love to have you join the family. Today's video is going to be a get ready with me to go absolutely nowhere because it's 2.44 a.m. The kids are asleep and I'm literally just doing this video for you. Needless to say, I'm not going anywhere and it will be all about my june faves now i know what you're saying marquita it's already august and you're giving us june faves we don't want no parts of it now you too late sis but don't worry i got you i don't have any excuse for not getting this in three weeks ago however i'm gonna give you june and july faves right now get it out the way so i'm on time for august boom you're welcome so let's get right into it as a reminder, all the products will be linked below in the description box. And today's look is going to be an inspo from one of my favorite YouTubers. Her name is Iris Balin. I think I'm saying her name right. She's a YouTuber. She's on Instagram. I think she's on Instagram more, but I absolutely love her. She's hilarious. And she did this makeup look. And I think it was via one of the Jenner girls, but I like the way it looked on Iris. So I decided, let me recreate the look. And with that said, let's get started. So let's talk about what I watched in june and july so first of all i must live under a rock because i was so behind on this is us like super behind so i actually sat and i watched season three season four and i'm actually almost done with season five right now i've been so behind but i've been watching it every single night when i'm trying to get the kids to go to sleep and knocking out one or two episodes at a time so i'm finally catching up i forgot to wipe my sponge hold on okay so just to recap season three is all about jack and rebecca's first date and how their kids are affected by his death individually and his childhood with his brother and the time he spent in the vietnam war it also introduces us to beth's childhood which we really haven't seen up until this point season four is about Jack courting Rebecca and introduces us to three new characters. And of course I'm watching, I'm like, who are these people? Did I miss something? I literally had to look to see if I missed anything, but I didn't. So we meet Cassidy, who's a Marine um, that just came home and she's suffering from PTSD. And I believe she's an alcoholic as well. And we meet Malik who is the teenager that is dating Randall's adopted daughter. And we learn about his family and that he has his own daughter. So he's a teenage father. And that was fine meeting those two. But then they introduce us to this blind guy who they're showing us like his life and how he met his, um, his wife and and their journey, you know, having a baby. And then come to find out, he's actually the son of Kate and Toby, which I thought it was really cool how they blended all the stories into the existing story that we already know of. Because at first I was like, who are these people? But it ended up, it was like that episode when they first introduced those three, I was like, this was very clever how they did that. Because I was like, oh shoot, that's the son. Like at the end that I was real, my, I was like mad hype about it. I think the writers did a really good job with the season. And then so far season five is about like this fight that um, we're living through, through the brothers, through Randall and Kevin and how they are um, coping with this fight while Kevin is having children of his own and, and everything like that, living his life and how he's having a hard how he's having a hard time uh, getting decent acting jobs because he keeps messing up and walking off the of sets and things like that. Randall's wife is having to close her dance studio because she can't keep the doors open and she keeps losing customers due to COVID. So we're really getting like into the nitty gritty with everyone's lives individually we're just really getting into their lives as they are trying to navigate every new part i guess we need a new 
we need a new characters because seeing the same characters over and over was fun but it's like what else can happen so throwing in these new characters really like gave it a nice spin so i'm still watching that i'll keep you updated on that um i think there's one more season so hopefully i can get through season five probably by the end of this week and then i can start season six and we can talk about that in august so i've also been watching american horror story this is um for this new season this is actually only the second episode now i'm a huge american horror story fan i have seen pretty much every single season um i think i missed a couple of episodes here and there but that's easy enough for me to go back and track them down and watch them but I am a fan. I'm a stan of American Horror Story. So this season is a, a series of short stories instead of having, you know, one season about the the entire, you know, the entire story in one season. And I think they started that two, um, two seasons ago when they did with the, um, the vampires. I think they were in Boston or somewhere in, in New England. And... The other story was about aliens. So I think they started that then, then and they probably got really good feedback on it because now they're doing every single episode seems to be its own story. The first episode was about dolls. Now this was intriguing to me because as you know, I make dolls. So I was all hyped to see it, um, but it had a, a cool little spin on it. And the ending, um, I'm not going to tell you exactly what's happening like I did with um, This Is Us because this is a newer show and This Is Us has been out for a while and I'm behind on it. So I won't spoil this for you. But the ending of it was really good. Um, and it brought you back to other stories that already happened. And in the second one, I expected a little bit more from it, but it started off decent and it turned out how I thought exactly it was going to turn out. But with the characters thing, wasn't quite given for me. It wasn't, it wasn't giving me, you know, what I wanted it to give. And I don't know what that would have been, but I certainly think that they could have done a little better with the ending on that one. But it did bring back, um, I think her name was Gabori. I don't know if I'm saying that right. But it brought her back, which was cool because usually when you watch American Horror Stories, every single season has this pretty much the same actors and actresses throughout the seasons. And maybe they'll introduce a new person here or there, but usually you see the same faces all the time. And this season, the first story, I was like, who are these people? I've never seen any of these people. Um, not that I remember, at least. I mean, I haven't watched it in a long time, but not that I remember. So I'm watching it. And then by the end of it, it made sense why I didn't know any of the people. But the second one, when I saw her, I was like, yes, okay. I love that she's back in it because I, I love her as an actress. And I think she does really good in American Horror Story. The other show that I've been watching is um, called Siren. Now, I know this is not a new show, so don't come for me. I remember when it came out, and I know it came out years ago. I've always wanted to watch it and never did, but I started watching it, and I like it. I believe I'm in season two right now, because after season one, it's like, okay, what angle could they spin on this to give it another season? They actually, I think there's three seasons. So now that I'm partway into season two, I'm like, okay. It's working out. But now I'm thinking, like, what could they do in season three? Like, what could possibly be left for them to do? So we'll see how that turns out. So, so far I'm liking it. No complaints. So we'll just have to see how that plays out and what else that they can do to keep the story going. Because I at this point, I don't know. I don't know what they could do. Mm -mm, that wasn't the move. That was not the move. You see what I did? So yeah, that's what I've been watching on the various platforms. Um, another thing that I got really into was watching Murder Mystery Mondays with Bailey Sarion. She is a gem. She's been out for a long time. She's do, she does like podcasts and she has a YouTube channel that she, um, she 
does her makeup while she's telling murder mystery stories, soft and unsolved, you know, true true crime stories. And she's thoroughly entertaining to me. And I'm, I like true crime, but sometimes when you watch some of these shows about certain things that happen, it like it gets boring. But she tells it in a way that makes it funny and like quirky. Not that true crime is funny or quirky, but the way she tells it is. And the way she does her makeup, like from scratch to the end of the to the end of the story is phenomenal like she does such a great job and i wish i could do something like that but clearly i'm still struggling on the makeup front but she, she does a really good job and i love listening to her she makes it seem like you're talking to her like your home girl and she's just telling you a story but she does a really good job at telling the story speaking of youtubers i found Peyton Marie Charles via Monroe Steel in June. And I absolutely love her. I think she is so funny. And she has the most serious face. But and the, you, you, you don't know if she's joking or she's not joking. And then she's funny. And she just comes off as like a super real person. And she has these like moments where she'd be talking and then she'll like say something real serious and she's like she makes a crazy face to go with it and you're like whoa <laughs> but it's so funny to me she's thoroughly entertaining I guess when she started she did um, other things other than vlogs but it seems like she does a lot of vlogs now and she's just fun to watch so i really do like um watching her channel and what's funny is through her channel, I found who my absolute favorite YouTuber is, and I found it through her channel. So on her channel, she features another YouTuber who's a little newer, and um, she's doing fantastic. Her personality is on point. Her name is Rochelle Chanel, and she gives um, us tips. She gives us stories. She is hilarious, and she always comments back when you comment on her on her uh, videos because I've been binging her videos like her old videos from a year ago and she still responds to my comments like she she's doing so good she does thrifting she has cute outfits she's just she seems like a really down-to-earth person that, and she just loves having fun and she like I can't get through not five minutes of her videos without cracking up like dying laughing like just she's so funny if you're not following these two ladies you have to follow them and they are even funnier when they're together like they make your face hurt from laughing so much i'm gonna go ahead and link all three of these youtubers down below but you absolutely have to to follow them because what's the point of giving you all these wonderful people to follow to entertain you if you don't follow them so make sure you go ahead and follow all three of them and you know what tell them i sent you Okay, so the next thing I want to talk about is my hair update. You know, I can always give you guys my hair update on um, my favorites videos. And so I did decide that I am going to go back locked. I bought the lock tool and I have it. I haven't, um, I haven't done it yet. I think I'm waiting till the fall to do it because by that time, um, you know, it would just be time to, you know, have long hair for the colder seasons and honestly I'm not stuck on it as much anymore because I do want it back but I also want to grow my natural hair out again long to see if I can do it but doing this hair is really putting a damper on my life every single day when I'm going to work because if I sleep on it wrong or don't wrap it up it's a mess in the morning and then I have a bad day so I think I decided to put it back in which I think I told you guys already so We'll see how that goes in in uh, the fall. However, I also just bought a new wig from RPG Hair. Chris is going to kill me. Like, for real, and I'm not buying no more wigs. This is it. Because I don't even put them on correctly. So, this is my last try. I bought the one with the curly baby edges to see if it would hide the lace a little bit better. Because I am terrible at hiding lace. It was either getting um, a closure wig where it just goes from here to here. Or getting this wig and this wig happened to come out and I was like you know what let me let me let me give it one last good try so this is it I'm trying it one more good time and and if I can't get it on correctly I'm not spending no more money on wigs because these wigs are racking up I get expensive ones I get cheap ones no matter what I'm still spending money and they're still racking up so this is it 
I might play in it tomorrow to figure it out, but this is it. I told you guys I was gonna start keto again for, for July. I didn't do it. So I've been taking lunch to work that is keto friendly and then ended up wanting a snack during the middle of the day and breaking my keto. So I am no longer um, going to hold myself to do it all the time, but I am I am taking better things to work. And as long as I take enough snacks to work that are keto friendly, I stay on track, but I need enough snacks. Like I get hungry and I just wanna eat everything. So I'm trying to space out my food and space out my snacks so I don't eat everything at once and then end up going to the gas station and buying like chips and gummy beers and stuff like that because like that's that's a no-no. I've also been looking up different ways to get minimally invasive body sculpting. I was up late one night and this commercial came on TV for cool sculpting. Um, so I was like, what the hell is that? And to me, it was a sign because I've been so unhappy with my body lately that I feel like, like, what am I going to do? I really don't have time with these kids being so young to like stop what I'm doing and work out. And by the time I get home from, from work, it's like feed them, get them ready for bed, get them in bed, fall asleep, do it all over again the next day. So it's been tough. So for the last two years since I've had them, I feel like I still look pregnant. And if I eat like this much food, my belly pokes up like I'm seven months pregnant and it's so annoying. And I know I'm getting older and these things happen, but I'm not, I'm just not happy at this point. So I've been looking up these things. So when this came on TV, I was like, this must be a sign to like figure out if something like this would work for me. Literally it came on TV and since I was up anyway, I started looking it up. And since then I've been doing research on it nonstop. I've been looking up cool sculpting and then from there it led me into looking into you know i look at the pros and cons of, of everything so from then it led me into looking into m sculpt neo which i'll do a separate um video about this whole experience and and figuring out what i want to do and all this stuff because i do plan on getting something done and i want to give you guys a dedicated video for it so it went from cool sculpting to then looking up the pros and cons and then the pricing and then going to something called M Sculpt Neo, which is the opposite. So a heat sculpting and muscle toning. So then I ended up looking at that and I was like, okay, well, this sounds better. And both of these are um, non-invasive. So I, was, I like anything non-invasive because, you know, I don't want to have surgery if I don't need to. So then... From there, um, something else popped up in my research. It was called, if I, remember, if I remember what it is, I'll put it on the screen, but I can't think of it right this second. But then from there, two seconds later, I found a video of this girl who she was giving us her, her light bulb story. So I was like, let me, you know, this is something to watch. Let me watch it. Because it's not something that I ever considered before. But when I, when I looked at the story and started doing more research on it, I was like, this is the one I want to do. So her life old story was about um, when she got minimally invasive lipo from elite body sculpture. I saw her results and honey, I was in. I felt like when I saw her results, I paid for it on the spot. I was like, take my money, do it now. And I started researching the doctor and all the people that he's worked with and looking up more and more videos and it turned into like, uh, like a rabbit hole of video and this these this one girl really stuck out to me because i think she's um she's an african actress and she got it done in virginia they say there's no cutting or or needles or anything involved but it looks like the thing that they use the lipo machine is the size of is two millimeters so he said it's the size of a freckle so they put that in you it melts the fat and then it sucks it out and you could see the fat going into the drawer into the container. Now, the thing that really sold me on it is that you're awake the whole time. You're awake, you're like, they let you play music, you know, whatever music you want. So you're conscious. She was literally on the phone with the, with the creator of this thing at the same time. And I was so impressed by this. And I was like, that's the one. That's what I wanna do. I went ahead and I did a virtual consultation and I got a price on it and it's not expensive for what it is and I'll put all the details in that dedicated video maybe I'll do that video next week but 
I am definitely gonna get it done. I want it done and everyone I've talked to, they want it done too. And I think that's the way that I'm gonna go. I'm gonna get this body snatched and hopefully I can get it done by the end of this year because like you literally can go back to work two days later. Um, that's how minimal it is. But of course it still takes a full six months for you to like really see the results and the swelling to go down and all that stuff. So I wanna get it done by the end of this year. So for the next six months, it's all like winter, spring, and then I'm snatched for summer. Summer 2023, that's where I wanna be. Another thing I've been working on is um, a lot of updates in the house. Not a lot, just a few. I haven't really been doing a lot lately, but I'm trying to update my closet. As you guys know, my, I have a little walk-in cedar closet for myself, for just my stuff. And I have been organizing it because literally I have things in there just thrown in. And that is not the move. Not the move at all. So I bought some containers and I've been fixing it up a little and getting it organized. But I haven't finished and I really do need to finish it. Because when I'm rushing through in the morning, it's still a little difficult for me to get to stuff. And I really want to be able to have it look neat and tidy and just like find stuff quickly and be out the door. So I need to finish working on that. And the other thing that I need to work on is um, my bathroom floor, the main bathroom floor. I want to refresh the grout in there. And honestly, I've been saying for a few weeks now that I'm gonna get it done and I keep putting it on my to-do list and I keep forgetting. So I really wanna do that because that grout is gross looking and definitely something that will be captured on the on the blog hopefully this week because we have a half bathroom which we can use but you can't step on the grout refresh for I think a few hours so that'll be hard for us um, with the kids and everything so I have to do it when the kids are sleeping and probably when Chris is about to go to bed so it's just done by the morning. So I'm gonna try once again to put that on my to-do list for this week. So we'll just check out next week's vlog and it should be in there how I do it. And I'm literally just taking the get, uh, grout refresh, which is like a, a white, I got it in white. And it's like literally like a toothpaste for the grout in your tile. <coughs> And you uh, brush it onto your existing grout and then you wipe it in. And I have a mosaic on the floor, so it's going to take a little bit of time. But I'm definitely going to. It needs to be brightened up because it, from the last owners, it just looks like gray in some spots from the dirt. And it's hard to get into that dirt. Even when you mop, like you, it's really hard to get into that. So definitely something on my to-do list. Now, I'd also like to talk about my favorite product, products for the month. And for the month of June, my favorite product, hands down, is my face cream. I don't have um, a skincare routine because I've never really gotten into it like that. But I absolutely want one and I need to try to um, figure out what's going to work for my skin. But I've been using for the last month the L'Oreal Revitalift Anti-Wrinkle and Firmin Face Moisturizer. It's a daily lightweight moisturizer and it's paraben free, dye free, fragrance free. It's paraben free, dye free, fragrance free. It's allergy tested and it has a pro retinol so it reduces the wrinkles and it firms the skin. My favorite thing about it is how lightweight it is. Like I hate putting stuff on my face especially now that it's hot out and then you go outside and you feel like your face is melting or you put something in your face and it feels so thick and then you try to put makeup on top of it and you're like this all this is going to slide off i hate that feeling it's such a terrible feeling so this is like a great moisturizer it's so lightweight it goes on so smooth you don't need to use a lot of it and honestly i would have never purchased it for myself i got it as a gift and the, my jar is almost done and I can't wait to get another one. Like, I don't think I'm gonna go back to anything else. 
I feel like I'm going to use this for a while because I really, really, really like it. I'm putting on my lashes now, so I'm doing it off camera. But another product that I got is for the home. And I'm looking it up, so I'll tell you the wrong information right now. As I was scrolling on TikTok, I came across this girl and she was making um, incense and she was making, I believe she was making candles. And she also has those reed diffusers. And when I saw her making them, I was like, let me look this up because I love a crafty person. And like, I will buy something from a small business any day before I go and buy it from a, from a big store. Doesn't matter the price if I want it and I like it and I like the way you know they're dealing with their business i'm gonna buy it. i'm gonna try it out so and it's a big plus that it's a black owned business so i was like i definitely need to support so the website is called rain essence r-a-y-n-e-s-s-e-n-c-e -E -E, and i'll put it in the description below and i purchased the reed diffusers now the aesthetic in my house is uh black white and gray with like totes and beiges it's very contemporary mid-century modern style but in my bathroom i have accents of black Actually, I have accents of black throughout the entire home. But when I saw this reed diffuser, it is completely matte black with black diffusers. Usually when you see diffusers, they're usually white or like a creamish color, but these are black. So I thought they were really cool and they work really well with my aesthetic. I'll pop a video in of how it looks in the bathroom, but I absolutely love it. And I was like, I need that. So I messaged her and I'm like, you know, I want to buy some of your product because I really love it. And I'm going to feature in a video and she was so excited about it. So. I'm gonna go ahead and pop her link below and I'll tag her in this video. I'm not sure if she has a YouTube, but I'll send her a message on TikTok. And you should also check out her TikTok page because it's like really soothing to watch her make things. And by the way, these diffusers are potent. They smell so good. Like they, the second I took it out the box, the box smelled good. I didn't even want to throw out the cardboard box because it smelled so good. And she gives you directions, you just dip it and flip it. And the bathroom smells magnificent so you have to get your hands on some of these she also sent me a free gift which are wax melts and i believe the scent was called blossom and they smelled so light and and like florally they're just a pretty scent not overbearing at all just really light and like pure smell they're they're really good and so thank you for sending me that free gift i really really love those so guys if you made it to this point in the video go ahead and put a kissy face emoji below to let me know that you enjoyed the video while I attempt to put on this liner as I talk. And if you like this video with me sharing my June and July faves, make sure you hit the like button and the notification bell so you can be notified every time I put up a video just like this one. So this is the final look, guys. This is my Iris Valen pink, rosy cheeked, sun kissed look. But don't go anywhere right now. Let me do my hair real quick for you and I'll come right back. Okay, I'm back and here's the final look. If you want to learn about other things that I like, make sure you check out my other monthly favorite videos. Until next time, bye.